So this year marks my 50th year oh, damn. as a member of Screen Actors Guild. Nice. Called them, said, hey. Never been to a SAG award before, and that's I don't think a lot of people get to hit this milestone very often. Would it be possible for my wife and I to attend the SAG awards just as an expression of, hey, congrats for 50 years in the union? They said no. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a shock. Josh! I was expecting a big ball of <laughs> twist. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions with Corbin. Actually, there is a huge twist at the end because right as I got off the phone, I got another phone call that said that the union president got in a plane crash. So I got on my helicopter in the backyard. I flew over there with Indrani. Good. They tried to stop me, but I punched the guy out. Good. Indrani passed out. They took her to the hospital. Yeah. I ran into the fuselage. Oh, yeah. Cut my way through the electrical things. There was some guy laying in the chair watching Netflix, but that was okay. <laughs> I grabbed the head of Screen Actors Guild, saved her. Oh, wow. Then went back to the hospital wow. and told Indrani that I love her more than Reka. But I'm still not going to the SAG Awards. Okay. <laughs> hey, we'll go back to your stupid regs and still Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Think it's special for all the What? 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 What the crap were you just doing? Uh, your mother. Wow. Uh, today, I didn't know she had one of those. Oh, man. Uh, today we got a, a video. This is why India doesn't build skyscrapers. I did not know that they didn't. I, I didn't know they didn't want to. Let's, let's think about that. Because okay, so technically been, in Mumbai, they're real, there's they're tall, tall buildings, buildings, but no skyscrapers. Maybe. Delhi, no skyscrapers. Calcutta, no what, skyscrapers. What defines a skyscraper? Right. They have really tall buildings, but... They have tall buildings, but I, yeah. What, what is what it is, that... What, what's the height limit that makes it suddenly become a skyscraper? LA doesn't have a ton of skyscrapers. We do. Uh, in downtown, we have a, we have. We some. have a couple that everything's but are a lot yeah. of earthquakes. You don't tend to make stuff really tall here. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, with the population density of India, you'd think they'd have. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. I've never thought about that before, but it's true. There really aren't any tall, giant buildings. I wonder why. Maybe this. Well, this will hopefully inform us if this is wrong. Blame the video and let us know why. Yes. Travel to almost any bustling city in Asia, and you'll notice that many of them have the same thing in common. They build big, massive skyscrapers Especially China. <laughs> tower over city centers, largely a product of economic growth and the demand for space in right, congested right. areas. Then there's India. The country's home to some of the most highly populated cities in the world yeah. and has the second highest GDP on the continent after China. But it's building about to pass don't China. really reflect these it's numbers. True. It has some skyscrapers, but they're mostly in Mumbai. There aren't very many of them, and yeah, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just... as compared to neighboring Asian cities. Mumbai sits on a peninsula where land is both scarce and expensive. Normally, such constraints force developers to build upwards. Think New York or Hong Hong Kong. And yet, this city is still far behind the skyscraper game. So, if India's population and wealth are so high, why does it build so low? Well, it all has to do with a little known rule holding the country back from going big and managing density. This is how politics, infrastructure, and money are stunting India's skyline. What, do they want it though? Right. Is it really stunting it? Yeah. The, that's a negative connotation. Us, skyscrapers are symbols of things like wealth, power, and growth. And they tend to rise in places where there's... Basically big penises. Space. Right. China has constructed nearly 1,100 skyscrapers... Real big penis, China. meters tall. It's followed by South Korea with 86, Malaysia with 61, and Indonesia with 48. Wow. But America but does not have a big penis. 24, and only a couple of buildings even close to 300 meters under construction. That's a very unusual difference considering its population of 1.4 billion people and its overall wealth. Instead of going tall, the country tends to build outwards, and historically there are a few reasons for that. One is infrastructure. With such a large population, India experiences frequent power outages, especially during the hotter months when demand for electricity is high, and many of its cities often grapple with access to clean water. 
Now, the availability of power and water are important for skyscrapers. High-rises consume more than low-rise buildings, so it's essential that the surrounding infrastructure can support that would them. Make, that would make That's some sense. part of the explanation, yeah. but really there's an even bigger culprit behind the country's short skyline, a building code mandated by the government that's been in place for decades. It's known as the Floor Space Index, or Floor Area Ratio, excitingly abbreviated to FSI. The FSI is the ratio between the total amount of floor space a developer can construct to the plot of land that floor space is being built on. It determines the total area that's allowed to be built on a site. Sharish Patel, a civil engineer, explains what this means with a little bit of maths. So if you have a plot of one hectare, and an FSI of one, let us say, then you can build one hectare of floor space, which would be, if your footprint is uh, half a hectare, you can build ground and one upper. Half a hectare on the ground floor, half a hectare on the first floor, that makes one hectare, mm. which is the plot area multiplied by the FSI. The lower the FSI number, the lower a building's volume and floor space can be. According to urban developers, this tool should be used in a way that doesn't create scarcity of land. Mm. It can help to reduce land cost per unit in areas where the price of land is expensive or limited. Mm. Now, several cities have these building codes for height restrictions in place, but across India, they are stricter than most countries with similar profiles. Take a look at Mumbai. In 1991, in an attempt to We've limit new construction and keep migrants out, Mumbai introduced an FSI of just 1.3. To give you a bit of context on just how low that number is, in New York, Manhattan has an average FSI of 15. And charges and you $4,000 a square foot. <laughs> high or even higher. Hong Kong's FSI is up to 12, Tokyo's is 20, and Singapore's is a staggering 25. <laughs> Horizontal growth in Mumbai is limited due to its geographical location on an island, but the low FSI limits it even further. It wasn't until 2022 that Mumbai loosened restrictions, huh. but only slightly. Now the FSI ranges between 2.5 and 5 depending on the exact location. Other cities across India have similar or even lower numbers. The country cites health and safety considerations for these restrictions. It's Didn't that really the number of billionaire in guy build like a big penis in Mumbai? Can we see a video about that? But we drove by that building. Planners, Ant guy, right? Like, his name is Ant. Doesn't really solve those issues. The biggest misconception uh, about density in planning is um, higher FSI equals higher population density, which is not true. You can have very tall buildings with one, you know, nice floor, one flat apartment per floor and only so many people living. And you will have areas like Dharavi, which are completely low-lying slums, but the population density is super high. Yeah. The outcome of these notions has a big impact on the country, and it goes far beyond the lack of some impressive skyscrapers. Mumbai, the one biggest consequence is affordability. You don't add floor space where people want to live, then the limited floor space becomes super expensive, right? With so many job opportunities We've been in on the places bridge. like Mumbai and Bangalore, people have been flocking to these city centres. But with lower FSIs and higher populations, developers can't keep up. If you don't accommodate people in more compact footprints closer to the city centre, at least you guys have good train systems. In cities, work in cities, you will spread outwards, right? So you will spread uh, horizontally. You will have to construct more roads leading out, which means more. <laughs> That's energy, how LA does. <laughs> We've got the landmass to do it. Planners say increasing FSI would be. Well, that's why it takes a billion years to get overcrowding and lowering housing prices. But it would also have to be accompanied by investments in mass transportation, right. roads, and other vital infrastructure networks. But while looser FSI restrictions and more skyscrapers could help address some of India's urban challenges, the general population might not be on board with the idea just yet. Hmm. People do have a negative connotation of skyscrapers and density. Hmm. Because the one or two buildings that come up, which are higher density, like I said, they come up in an area with poor infrastructure, no green spaces. Though it's only a small increase, the recent change... Or they put it right next to a slum. ...could indicate a taller future for the city's skyline and better managed population density.
Development has increased rapidly in just the last few years. In 2022 alone, 31 skyscrapers are set to be completed in India. 27 of them are going wow. to be in Mumbai, reaching heights of around 200 meters and mostly offering residential space. India's population growth, especially in its major cities, isn't slowing down anytime soon. Mm -mm. And real estate costs will continue to rise as space dwindles. But if the country builds further into the sky and invests more in its infrastructure, then its urban housing crisis could start to ease. And Mumbai could find itself with a brand new skyline. This video was made possible by Bluebeam. You can learn more about that at the link below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M. Informative video. Yeah. Uh, if there's anything, obviously wrong in the video please let us know down in the comments yeah because we see. know literally nothing about we, this yeah, nothing <laughs> uh that's super interesting though that it has such a such a rule against that because that would be a lot of people's first inkling of like oh you have a, a like a, a affordable housing crisis and you'd have a lack of land why not well, why wouldn't you build up that's the that's why manhattan is the way manhattan is yeah and that's why they built Central Park because they knew as they Aren't were they developing about it. Extending Manhattan? Have you um, seen that? No, like like literally putting more land in at the end, and really to build it. Oh, that's one of the proposals that, that I've seen. That would <laughs> which be is expensive real estate, and yeah. I think the people who were right there on the lower, uh, on <laughs> that that <laughs> if you're on the lower west side, I don't think you're going to want people to extend that real estate because you've got prime real estate being down on the lower south side the lower yeah. west side but that's why it is so high is because there were so many people coming to new york manhattan's a tiny little island when you count all five boroughs i mean uh, brooklyn doesn't have a lot of skyscrapers but the main inter part the reason there are so many skyscrapers is you, you can't expand outward you have to go up yeah there's nowhere else to put people yeah that's which for indrani and i uh, we i mean we love cities, so mm -hmm. the the more building, the better. And it makes sense that I, I find it interesting all of the rationale behind why they might or might not build. And clearly, maybe it's just a matter of developers doing it and the hurdles they had to cross because they're clearly not opposed to it. They have how many coming up? He just said in mm -hmm. Mumbai right yeah, now, thirty-one or something. I like think that. it's primarily just been a matter of need, and I think I think one of the bigger contributors maybe is the the energy aspect. Yeah, you know, because that is that's the more you build up, the more energy and electricity yeah. and heat and water you have to get to those places. I think the one video we saw that I never posted just we didn't we didn't like it at all was uh, the video of that ant place that really that billionaire guy. Oh yeah, 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 that yeah. Built his house right right next to the next slum, to the slum. Yeah. and it's like. An absurd house that's way too big. Yeah, and also it's just like a big fu to literally everybody down below. Yeah, my my as one opposed of the, to something if you built like a affordable yeah housing. <laughs> one of the things that always troubles me, I know it does you and anybody with a heart, <laughs> is that whenever a dignitary comes to a place in any country, or a massive sporting event like the Olympics or the World Cup is done. Then everybody's ready to beautify a neighborhood because mm -hmm. they can make money off of that beautification. Mm -hmm. But if people need it, eh, yep, yeah. Luckily, the Olympics has started to get a little better. They're now only accepting countries that already have the infrastructure, right. as opposed to oh, except for the one they just. I know did at the, the one they just World Cup. <sighs> big disaster uh, <laughs> but uh, it's saudi no it's so many countries had vied for the olympics in the hope that doing so would bolster their economies because it does bring in a, a crap load of money but then the olympics leave. yeah the olympics require you to spend more than your country's ever spent and then if you don't make that back yep. up yours pal yep oh you're stuck with all that yeah empty stadiums and which yeah. is why they're Wanting to, like they're, they're like for the World Cup, it's a three: like Canada, us, and Mexico. Right. Uh, we'll have people right here in our the brand new beautiful stadium that they built here in Inglewood in Los Angeles. Yeah. But anyways, very interesting video. Uh, let us know other informative videos. If there's anything wrong in this, please let us know what that is down below. Josh!